Hello everyone, welcome back to The Budget Sportsman. Thank you so much for joining me on today's video. A lot of you have been asking for an update on the new budget boat. Budget boat number two, and yes, let me admit that I have not chosen a name yet. A lot of you gave me some great suggestions. I just haven't quite settled on one yet. But today I'm going to give you an update. Now before I get into the update of the work I've done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in time two months and show you what the boat looked like when we first got it. I realized in my original introduction to this boat, I really didn't give you a good overview of the boat. I just mostly told you how I got it. So in this video, we're going to jump back in time, look at what the boat was like when I got it, and then jump back to the present day and I'm going to walk around and show you all the work that we've done to it and the upgrades that we've made. All right, so here the boat is in all of its glory. This is a Nordic Crestliner Musky Pro 18. Uh, the paperwork says it's a 1986, but from some of the information I found out online, it may be a 1985, but it's somewhere in that era. As I already mentioned, it has a 2015 Suzuki four-stroke. It does have 9.9 .9 stickers on it because someone was trying to take it on a 10 horsepower lake and kind of cheat the system. Uh, but according to the model number itself and the serial number, it is a 20 horsepower Suzuki four-stroke from 2015. It does have a pretty decent trailer. Uh, it has nice uh, side bunks on it. I already unloaded this uh, boat into the lake and back onto the trailer one time and found it to be super easy to load. One of the things we are gonna have to do eventually is replace the tires, probably not right away, but we are gonna wanna replace those because this one in particular is dry rotted. I may change this out because the current spare looks a little bit better than this tire. Another thing that we're going to do is replace the incandescent trailer lights with LED lighting. It costs about $30 to do that. I did it on the old trailer and it was well worth it. It did not have any issues at all uh, with burning out if I backed into the water with the lights on. Some of the bulbs on this trailer are burnt out, so it's just gonna be easier to replace the whole thing. Now looking up inside the boat, you can see one of the reasons why we got the boat. It has got a big flat floor. There is no soft spots in the floor. And uh, this is amazing. We took it out the other night with the family and my daughter was just running around and just really enjoying all of the space. This is a, you know, for a family of four, a really nice sized boat, plenty of space. And the flat floor is so much nicer than all the ribs in the old boat that we were constantly tripping over. Now, here in the corner of the frame, you can probably already see there are a couple of fish finders on this boat. This one is an older eagle. And then on the other side, there is an older hummingbird. And I'm gonna be replacing those recently. I actually used some Cabela's club points to buy a Garmin unit that I had installed on the old boat. And so I'm gonna be moving that over to this boat very, very soon and taking these older units off the boat. You can also see that he had anchor setups on this boat, both rear, front and rear anchors. Uh, here's the anchor and you have the anchor, uh, I don't know what you call these, the handles, cranks, whatever, uh, both on the rear and also on the front. And I'll show you that in just a minute. Came with four seats. One of them's not in the boat at the moment. Um, this one back here sits up on kind of a wooden frame and sits up on this back bench here, which is the only bench really in the uh, entire boat. But when you lift this up underneath there is your batteries. It came with two batteries. I already pulled one out and tried to redo some of the wiring. Uh, that's one of the other projects is I'm gonna redo a bunch of the wiring in this boat and different switches and so forth. And then the other cool thing is this does not have a portable uh, plastic fuel tank. This actually has a 13 gallon aluminum fuel tank, which is pretty cool. And I can show you in a minute, but it also has a fuel gauge that goes with it, which is pretty, pretty handy. Another thing I really am enjoying or liking is the fact that there's, there are multiple rod holders throughout the boat. Uh, you can do a little trolling or just if you want to do some bobber fishing, just throw your, your bobber out there and set your rod down for a minute. Let's climb up in the boat and I'll show you a few other things. There is a rod holder over on this side of the boat. Oh, it's on there a little bit crooked. That bothers my wife, but that won't be too hard to fix. There is a <laughs> emergency kit down the floor. Got to find a place to put that. And it did come with a Minn Kota 55 pound thrust Endura Max trolling motor. And so that has been going to be pretty handy, I believe. Got to determine whether I'm going to use this one or maybe take the one off the other boat. But I think this one's in a little bit better shape than the one off of the old boat. So I will probably be sticking with that. Now, one of the things I love about this boat is the rod lockers and storage. It is really, really nice. So on this side, 
Uh, I've got my ore down in there, but over a period of time, I am sure that I'm gonna find other things to be putting in there. And here is that uh, fuel gauge I mentioned. You pull this switch and you get a fuel level reading. Pull it one more time and you get a light that illuminates down over the gauge. That's kind of handy. This switch here is for the live well, which I'll show you in a minute. That flips on the live well pump. And there is a uh, valve here that shuts off the flow of water or allows you to drain the water back out of the boat. And that runs up to the front where the live well is. Now on the other side of the boat, you've got the rod locker on that side. On the other side, you've got a ruler here and another rod locker which we already have put all of our life jackets in, which I love. We used to have a whole bin that we'd carry in the boat, taking up floor space. And so I am in love with having these rod lockers. Up front, again, you have another anchor uh, with the crank. And in here is your live well. It's not a real huge live well, uh, but it's a bigger live well than I had in the other boat because I didn't have one on the other boat. And then up here in front, you also have another storage compartment. There's a diaper in there, also a throwable. And uh, at one point he said the batter used to be stored up here, which eventually I may consider doing that just for better weight distribution since the battery, the fuel tank, the motor, and myself all sit in the back of this boat. It may be beneficial to move the weight of the motor up front at some point, but that's not something I'm in a big hurry to do anytime soon. Now, one other thing I forgot to mention is it does have a spotlight up front, which is run by a switch in the back. Again, coming to the back, I'll show you the switch panel. This is something I'm probably gonna replace with a newer switch panel. Uh, but there is a switch panel that runs most of the accessories in the boat. Uh, there's some different switches in some kind of random places. But overall, uh, that runs most of the accessories. So looking up here from the back, you can see multiple seats, a lot of space, storage to keep things in the boat so we don't have to just always be loading and unloading things out of the boat. And those are some of the really, really big advantages that I'm super excited about. All right, so now that you've seen what the boat looked like when we got it, I'm gonna walk around and show you the upgrades and the changes that we've made to the boat. And obviously the first thing you've already probably seen behind me is we have a boat cover on the boat. Now, it's fall right now, leaves are falling like crazy. And one of the things that used to irritate me with the old boat is just getting all kind of leaves and water and junk in the boat. Now that boat had no floor, it had no carpet, so it really didn't matter. We would scoop everything out, no big deal. This boat does have carpet, it also has foam under the floor. So I really don't want it sitting outside just soaking in all of the rain and muck and leaves and everything all year round. So we bought this this cover on Amazon, I believe it was about $60. And in a moment, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the cover off and show you the support system that I made actually just today to make sure it's nice and arched and that it's not gonna puddle up water anywhere. Haven't got a chance to try it in a rainstorm yet, but it looks like it's gonna work out really well. So let me get the cover off the boat and I'll show you the support system. All right, now that I've gotten the cover off, you can see the support system that I created here. And it's just using PVC pipes. Now the boat actually had, I don't know if you can see it right over there, it had the original supports or the brackets to put the fiberglass bows in to support the cover. However, I did not have the bows and when I researched getting the fiberglass bows, it was gonna be a lot more than the method that I did here. So what it is, this is three quarter inch PVC pipe. I used a T and cut out the back side of the T so it'd snap over this rail right here. Not really snap, but just sit over the rail. And I have four supports and one of them I messed up so I've got to get another piece of PVC pipe that's going to go back here. They're spaced just under three feet apart and they seem like they're going to do a great job at holding the cover up off the boat. Now I am thinking eventually I may want to put supports across the middle here um, at the top just to keep everything evenly spaced and to keep it from sagging down between but I'm going to see if that's necessary before I do that. And the reason is because I tried cutting the one that's broken and putting a T in to put those supports in and then it would no longer bow properly. And so um, I'm going to just hold off and see if I need that. I did put a piece up here which helps us kind of support over all of the anchor and everything up front. Now I'm going to take these supports off. That way they're out of the way and we can see what's in the boat. Okay I got the cover off and let's take a look around the boat and talk about what I've done to it so far. Let's actually start with the trailer because that's where a good bit of work has been done at least recently. So I mentioned in the previous part of the video that I was planning to update the tires at some point. I actually found a good deal on tires already mounted on new rims. These are painted. I believe the old ones were galvanized, so it's kind of a trade-off there. 
Um, but I'm not going to get rid of the old galvanized rims. So if these ever rust out, I'll be able to just switch back to the galvanized rims. But it was a good deal for wheels and tires. When I went to change the wheels and tires out, I did find out that I was having some problems with the bearings. So I ended up replacing uh, the hubs, the bearings, the wheels, and the tires. Yes, that got a little bit more expensive than I wanted to. However, I could not find locally the right bearings to fit my old hubs, and I ended up just having to replace out all of the hubs i also replaced all of the lighting with led lighting and so um, now all of the lights here the marker lights and everything are all led and they are all working which they were not before um the other thing i did that i'll mention it's not part of the trailer that i did but the other thing that i did to the boat is on the back of the boat right here where the transom uh, or where the my transducer is the previous owner or probably owners over the years had mounted several different transducers by screwing through the hull and there was also one on the other side now when i got the boat out of the water the first couple times i found that i was taking on water so i tried fixing it myself and was not having much luck so i ended up taking it to a welder and actually for a very reasonable price he welded up all of those holes for me and I was really happy when the next time out on the water, I hardly had a drop of water in the boat. After leaving the boat in the water for three days, the, the hull was almost 100% dry. Maybe just, a, just a, a few drops of water is it. Certainly nothing to be concerned about. Then after I got everything welded up, I did add this piece here, which is a piece of composite material. This is actually from like a decking material. I believe it's called Azec. And I used epoxy to put that on. So now I can screw my transducer to that without screwing through the hull. And if I need to move it around, it's no big deal. I'm not putting more holes in the hull like was there before. I believe the welder welded up, I think, 10 or 11 holes on the back of this hull. And so really glad to get that taken care of. Now moving up to the front of the trailer, I do have the parts already here to uh, change out this hitch right here. This is an older style hitch and there's no way to lock it. So I just need to grind this one off and then get my brother-in-law actually to help me weld the new one on. I already actually have a spare jack around, so I'm going to change out the jack as well. And then this needs some new safety chains. I already have those as well. I just need to get to it. Another thing that I did is I did uh, change out the spare tire holder that was on the old boat and put it over here. That way the spare tire is not bouncing around inside the boat. It also put the weight a little bit further forward, which really helps because this boat was actually a little bit uh, tail heavy on the trailer. And so now it rides really nicely. All right, now let's just jump into some of the things that I did inside the boat. Let's move toward the back here. And you're going to see if you paid attention in the original video that I moved some things around. So originally the winch for the rear anchor was up here about where this rod holder is. And it was just kind of always in the way. I didn't have much room to work or to set things down. And I didn't really care for that. So I moved the winch back a little bit. And I put the rod holder up where it's right in front of me. I can see it when I'm, uh, I'm trolling, but it's not going to be in the way. Speaking of trolling, I did add to the boat. I wanted to mention these are rods that I didn't have before. I added a couple of trolling rod reel combos. Now these are from South Bend. They're called the Black Beauty Combo. It is a eight and a half foot rod with a line counting rod and reel. Sorry, the sun is kind of not the best conditions for filming today. But anyway, it's got a rod, uh, a line counting rod and reel there. And these are budget friendly rods. I think they run something like under $70 a piece. And so I've, I've got two of those. So I started trolling or I'm trying to learn how to troll. Not very good at it yet, but I'm um, trying to learn how to do that. And that's something I added to the boat as well. So just kind of shifted everything around. Now, another thing you're probably going to notice back here is that I changed out the seat. Originally, the seat for the driver was one of these style of seats. And I found that it would lean back too far and it would not give me any back support. And I just would be uncomfortable after an hour or two in the boat. This is a stadium seat I got from Walmart. I think it was on clearance for like $17. And it actually, I was going to put it in the old boat before we upgraded boats. And uh, I ended up switching it over here. It's not as comfortable as some of the other seats because it doesn't have a cushion on the bottom, but it does dry really fast if it gets wet. And it more than makes up for the uh, lack of comfort on the seat by the back support that it gives me. This strap over here is adjustable. And so you can adjust how much support or how far forward you want that, to, that back of that seat to lean. And uh, the other day, I'd say a week or so ago, I was out trolling and probably spent, oh, I don't know, probably at least eight hours in the boat trolling that day, maybe a little bit less. And my back was totally fine, felt very, very comfortable. So that was definitely uh, worth the $17 upgrade. The next thing I wanted to point out to you was this back here. This was where the original switch panel was. It was outdated. It was hard to reach behind the chair and half the stuff didn't actually work. So I bought a piece of Kydex 
and I molded and cut out a piece of Kydex to fit over where all the old holes were. And then I relocated a new switch panel up here. And I moved several of the switches, like right here, you can see I've removed some of the switches, different places that were scattered around the boat, and I put everything right here. I wanna get some labels to mark these switches, um, but this has been really handy. I've got all of my, uh, all my lights, my nav lights, my anchor light, uh, interior lights, spotlight, I've got my uh, live well pump, my bilge pump, uh, my fish finder's on a switch, and there's one more thing that I'm forgetting, but anyways, it's there's all of those switches are actually filled. All right, the next thing I want to show you is inside this compartment, and it is some of the wiring. Again, I apologize for the bad lighting today. This is just the time and place that I have to actually do it, but I wanted to show you down inside of here. There we go. Hopefully you can see that. Um, I replaced, or I should say I didn't replace, but I added a circuit breaker. I added a master shutoff switch, which shuts off everything in the boat except for the bilge pump. Then I added a positive and a negative bus bar and tidied up all the wires. So it is much, much cleaner in here. The other thing I did is I added a bilge pump, or I shouldn't say added necessarily, but I replaced the bilge pump with one that has an automatic float switch. And so that is a big deal as well. And then I did a little bit of rerouting of some of the hoses down here so I could get the live well pump away from uh, the actual drain plug. It was really a pain to get in and out before. Now, as we pop back out of here, we'll move to the other side. Again, I did some repositioning of the rod holders and different things, but the big upgrade here is we've got the Garmin Echomap 73 SV. I think I mentioned earlier in the video that I had just bought this and used it only a couple times on the other boat using some Bass Pro and Cabela's points. And so that was one of the first things I did is moved it over here. Now I'm not great with fish finders, but I've been really impressed with this fish finder over the old super, super cheap thing that I had before. Uh, really been enjoying getting to know it and getting to use it. All right, so there is your update on the new boat. And I think that pretty much covers it. I do apologize again for the lighting, but that covers everything pretty much from the new equipment, the, the trolling rods, the fish finder. We covered the update on the trailer, the things that we want to do on the trailer as well. As far as the boat goes, the, really the biggest things were getting the back welded so that it's watertight. It's super thrilled about that. Um, and the electrical system, all the new switches, the new bilge pump, uh, the new master cutoff switch, the new bus bar and breaker and all those things. And so really, I have to be honest with you, when we first got this boat, I was a little bit nervous about whether it was going to be the perfect boat for our family. I was excited about it, but there was some nervousness. But honestly, after all these changes, the last trip out, I really kind of settled in and really started to enjoy this boat. The fact that it's watertight after getting it welded, I'm thrilled about. Uh, the seat's comfortable. The motor's been running great. Um, just really been enjoying the way it's set up, the way it's running, and really, really enjoying the boat. If you have any ideas of what we should do with the boat, whether that would be an upgrade or a trip we should take or something we should do with the boat, uh, please feel free to leave me a comment down below and I'll certainly give it a consideration. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, remember to get off YouTube and get outdoors into God's great creation.